Hello everyone. Uh, this is Jiming San, and this is Miyuki, and we'll talk about an awesome work today about molecule graph generation. And this paper is published in ICML 2018. Is uh, the name is Junction Tree Variation Autoencoder for Molecular Graph Generation, and uh, it's uh, written by uh, Wen Gong Jin, Regina Barzoli, and Tommy Yakola. And uh, in fact, I got a nice slide uh, done by Wen Gong. Thanks very much. And here's a link to their code, and you're welcome to try it out. So molecule graph generation, and uh, the focus is given a set of uh, uh, drug molecules, and you want to generate mo more uh, molecule candidates that with uh, similar or even more desirable properties. And so you want to use uh, uh, this variation autoencoder for doing that. So why do we care about uh, molecule graph generation? It has a lot to do with uh, drug discovery. So just drug discovery is on a very high level is about producing uh, those molecules that are represented as uh, graphs. So the node of the graphs are the atoms and the edges are the bond between atoms. So you want to produce or figure out what are the uh, desirable molecule graphs with uh, good properties, right? So th in this case, uh, they want to create the molecules with high potency. That means it has more of the uh, desirable effect you want. And uh, besides this graph generation or molecule generation task, they also interested in this uh, molecule optimization task. So in this case, you, you actually have an input molecule with certain property. You want to create or generate a molecule that is similar to the input molecule, but with a better property scores. So it's about how to modify those molecules to increase certain properties. Okay, so how to generate graph? So far, the, the main approach is generating those graph node by node, right? Doing this very local expansions. And this hasn't, it's turned out to be not very successful. The reason being that not all the uh, graphs are chemically valid, right? So if you expand uh, this existing molecule graph by one atom, and it may end up with uh, some kind of intermediate states that are not um, valid, chemically speaking. So that creates a lot of uh, challenge if you want to create those graphs node by node, doing all this local expansions. And uh, so previous work, as we will show in the experiments, have a lot of uh, challenges just to create valid molecules, right? let alone uh, better properties. Right? Just create a molecule structure that is actually valid turn out to be a non-trivial task if you generate this molecule graph node by node. And it has been shown in the previous work as well. And so this, this paper, the key idea behind this paper is instead of generating uh, this graph node by node, right? each node is atoms, uh, we want to look at larger structures. Right? In this case, they call functional group. So those functional groups are kind of a clusters uh, or subgraph in this original molecule graphs. For example, a ring can be a functional group, or a particular bond can be a functional group, or particular atoms, or uh, and other structures. Right? So those are all chemically meaningful structures, and those are the things we should be looking at in, in terms of expanding the existing molecule graphs. So that's one key idea. And of course, in the past, the biggest challenge is generating the proper like ring structures. That was uh, kind of extremely difficult when you do this node by node, but in using this functional groups concept, because you're selecting from available or meaningful uh, functional groups, so you can actually create those rings uh, fairly easily. So how do, how do they do this? And, uh, or what benefit of this type of idea of generating group by group or functional group by functional group, it will make this generation process much uh, shorter. Right? Instead of generating 14 atoms uh, with corresponding bonds, you're now made, maybe just putting together three or four uh, functional groups. So it's a lot shorter. So it's, in that sense, simpler to create a molecule structure if you're looking, uh, looking at, the, at the functional group level. And it's also very easy to, uh, val uh, to check the validity. In fact, the performance, as we've seen, uh, we will show uh, in a few minutes, it's so good, right? This validity uh, metric become uh, trivial, right? You get 100% valid structure all the time using this, uh, this new algorithm. 
OK, so uh, the other idea, the, uh, a key idea behind this paper is this tree decomposition. Right? Instead of looking at a graph, which is a little bit harder to manipulate, they want to look at the backbone of the graph, which is a tree, or what they call a junction tree. So that is essentially a spanning uh, tree that over the functional groups. So every node of this junction tree corresponding to a molecule um, of this functional group, and they're connected, and it's a tree structure. So uh, if you think about, OK, I mean, the color here indicate the different type of functional group. And in terms of uh, the number of distinct functional groups, I mean, uh, coming from a large molecule database, it's uh, over I mean, a quarter million of molecules, it only have less than 800 of those functional groups. So it's a very uh, manageable in that sense. So here is their uh, high level idea of this process. They use this variation autoencoder. So it has an encoder process, then a decoder process. And it has this two different paths, right? So one is on the graph level. If the molecule, uh, molecule or you have the molecular graph, then you want to encode the graph. Then that encoder uh, will give us this vector representation for the graph that denoted by ZG. Then similarly, we have this tree structure, right? That's uh, this junctional, uh, junction tree. And every node here corresponding to some functional group. And we also want to encode this tree, right? So that's uh, represented with this uh, ZT vector. So that's the encoder part. Then you have this decoder part. You first uh, decode have this tree decoder, right? So it's uh, given this vector representation of the tree, and you want to kind of create a corresponding tree, this junctional tree. And then from there, you can do a graph decoder to uh, reconstruct the molecule uh, graphs. OK, so now let's look at some of the details in the, the, the approach and uh, give you some more idea. And so on the encoder part, they use this message processing uh, neural network structures, I mean, uh, messes for both uh, molecular graph and also for the tree structures. And on the decoder part, when you decode uh, this from a vector to a tree, so it went through this kind of a depth first search kind of a, a process. And at each step, step, you're making two decisions. One is uh, whether you're expanding this node or you're, I mean, and then if you're expanding, then what label you should put it there, right? What functional group you're putting there? And you do this uh, step by step. And if you're not expanding, then you're backtracking uh, to, the, to the parents. And you, you go through this depth first search structure to create this tree. And once you have the tree, essentially you have all those functional groups, but you just don't know how to connect them. And that's where this graph decoder comes in. And it just wanted to do this local adjustment so that the, the, the adjacent um, functional groups, they are compatible. Right? And the way to do that is uh, just go through this uh, kind of enumer enumeration process, right? Just for example, this two rings, right? How do you uh, put them together? There's three different ways to do it, and they just enumerate, enumerate all these different uh, possible subgraphs and score them. Uh, and, and then the one with the highest score will be kept, and and they do this uh, in a graph decoder in this uh, process. Okay, next quickly, let's look at some uh, experiments, and uh, it has a. It, uh, it, it used a, a very large uh, open database called Zinc uh, database with over 250,000 compounds. And they want to see, uh, can you generate valid uh, molecules? And then they want to check whether the molecules have a better property, right? Uh, in both kind of a global sense, right? So if you generate a bunch of molecules, right? In, I mean, on average, are they uh, better than the ones in the origin database. And the other one is like more of the uh, optimization process, right? Comparing to where you started, right? This input molecule, then you produce some kind of a new molecules or the new molecules uh, have better property than the, the input molecule. That's a, kind of the local uh, optimization, what they call that. So uh, they have a bunch of different baselines, right? Some are uh, kind of string based uh, baseline uh, based on kind of a chemical uh, representation with this uh, called so-called uh, smile string. And, they, and then they have also graph based method, but those graph based method, they, they producing or generating the graph node by node. They're not looking at this functional group structure. And in terms of validity, right? You can see there's a huge uh, jump, right? Comparing to their method uh, versus especially some of the earlier method based on uh, smile strings or even graph, right? So you can see that the, the based on the functional group, 
the validity of those uh, molecule candidates are 100 percent well some some of the early baseline only have like a 7 or 14 or uh, 45 uh, 44 percent right so it's a very challenging problem in the past but with this uh, new method it already kind of completely solved this uh, problem and in terms of the property itself, right, you can see that here, compared to uh, some of the baselines, right, their method, right, this junction tree of VAE method, achieve much higher uh, property scores compared to uh, these three different baselines. And the property score here is solubility and ease of uh, synthesis. And that's in this, a global sense. But they also compare, like, okay, if you're looking at optimization, oh, uh, Oh, sorry, this is some example of the best molecule they generated and they, they seem to make uh, chemical sense and it has a very high score. And now we look at the last experiment where they focus on the kind of the local structure uh, to do molecule optimization, right? So here you want to produce new molecules that are similar to the original molecule but with a better property, right? Here the x-axis is how similar they are to the original input molecule, right? With a, like the higher value of this preservation score, they're more similar. And then the y-axis is the average improvement. And of course, the higher, the better. And you can, as you can expect it, right, if, the, if you constrain the molecule to be very similar to the input molecule, the improvement will be less. But still, there is some improvement. And here's an example of that, right? This is the input molecule. And then uh, if you constrain this uh, kind of the similarity between the, the generating molecule to the input to be uh, close to 0.6 in this preservation score, and then the change is very local. And it still has some improvement on the, the property score, but uh, a lot less. But if, I mean, on the other hand, right, if, the, I mean, if you can lower the preservation score and like less constraint, and you can see the structure of the molecules changed a lot more, and so does the, the, the improvement. And um, yeah. So just in conclusion, right, this is an awesome paper uh, that's it's about junction tree variation autoencoder, and it's uh, uh, for molecule graph generation. The key idea is instead of looking, I mean, generating molecules node by node or um, atom by ant ad atoms, and we should look at functional groups. And they, they uh, proposed uh, this kind of a junction tree based uh, approach to create a valid molecule and uh, it's uh, outperformed many of the previous baseline by quite a bit. And again, here's the, the code uh, from, from <clears throat> this paper and you're welcome to try it out.